Welcome to Gentle Restorative Yoga this morning. My name is Sandra, and I would love you to start in whatever seated position is best for you, and then close your eyes. I want you just to feel the body releasing and settling into its space. This is your precious time. I want you to tune everything else out and just be. Take a nice deep inhale through the nose. Cleansing exhale through the mouth. Feel yourself letting go. Take another deep breath in, hold it. Really loud exhale. And then inhale, take the arms all the way up. Bring the palms together and release them to your heart in prayer pose. So we will chant this morning. You're the only one that can hear you, so don't be shy. This is a great time to practice. Um, I'll chant it first so you can hear it, and then the next three we're together at the same time, and we're just chanting Shanti for peace. So if you want to set the intention in your mind that, <clears throat> excuse me, you're sending peace to somebody in particular who might not be feeling well uh, mentally or physically, or you, in general, just want to send peace out to the world, that is fabulous intention. Or maybe it's you who needs that peace this morning, and that is totally fair to recognize and acknowledge. Take a deep breath in. Ah, oh, let it go. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Together. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Last one. Om Shanti 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 And then take a moment to set an intention for your practice. And when you're ready, simply release your hands to rest on your knees keeping your eyes closed, ah, beginning to follow the breath. And as you just allow yourself to kind of saturate in peace for a moment, I wanted to share this story with you. It's called The Wind and the Flag. And it's about these these two groups of monks who are standing outside of a, a Buddhist monastery and there's a flagpole and there's a flag and the flag is blowing and whipping around in the wind. And a wandering monk comes by and he hears these two groups of monks arguing. One group is saying that it's the flag that's moving and the other group is saying, no, it's the wind that's moving. And so this argument goes on back and forth and back and forth, each group trying to offer logic, if you will, as to why their opinion is correct. But basically, every argument boiled down to it was either the flag that was moving or it was the wind. So this wandering monk stopped and he said, actually, you're all wrong. It's neither. It is your mind that is moving. And that's kind of a story about having an either or opinionated mindset. I just want you to think about that for a second. Turn your hands over so the palms are on the knees. And keeping your eyes still closed, just add some upper body movement. 
you might sway from side to side, you might drop forward, you might decide to lean all the way back, whatever it is. And just thinking about that story for a moment. Is it you, your body, that is moving consciously or uh, is it your inner true Atman, yourself, that is moving the body? Is your window open? There's a breeze coming through and maybe you could say that you're moving with that breeze. Now keep your eyes closed. Come back to center. Find stillness for a moment. Take your focus deep into the heart center. I consider that to be where your true self lies. So whenever I meditate, that's where I go, deep into the heart center. That true self doesn't go anywhere else. It's always with you. Consider that for a moment. It's always there, it's always with you. Now add that upper body movement again. I want you to notice how as you move, the heart chakra, the heart center is moving as well. It has no choice. But the very center point of your heart center isn't moving, it's still still. So is it truly you who is moving? Or is it simply, well, maybe my muscles and bones are moving because my brain is dictating that, but maybe that doesn't actually come from you. And so I want to come back to focusing on this idea of, of stillness, of non-action, just being. So go ahead and come back to center. Inhale, take the arms up, bring the palms together, and release them home to your heart. So as you softly open your eyes and allow your arms to release, if you have a strap or a belt or um, anything similar, go ahead and grab it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Remember, I'm trying to make all these poses so that you don't have to use yoga props if you don't have them. So I'm just going to set that right out in front of me. And if you don't have one, I'll give you a variation. All good. We're going to inhale the left arm up. Bend at the elbow, let the hand come behind your head and neck. Right fingertips to the earth beside you. So you're gonna to try to sit up as tall as you can through the spine without creating a huge arch in the low back, so draw the stomach in. You might notice how having this top arm behind you forces the head forward. If that's the case for you, you could slide the hand up a little farther so that you don't feel like your neck is being pushed. You could slide that hand off behind the shoulder a little bit more so your head also has its freedom. Perfect, breathe. We're gonna lengthen up through that left elbow, soften the right shoulder. Strong breath in and let it go. So we're gonna add on, we're turning this into cow face or gomukasana. So Release that left arm for a moment. If you have a strap or a belt or a sewing tape measure, anything that's long, we can use this if the arms cannot find each other in cow face. So I'm gonna turn around for a second so you can see what cow face would look like. Left arm will come up, I bend at the elbow. So the right arm is gonna come up behind me and maybe the fingers find each other, but if they don't, you have your strap. If you do not have a strap, you're grabbing on to your shirt, <laughs> you can hang on to your hair. You don't have to hang on to anything. It doesn't matter. It's wherever the arms end up, do not force them. You know, for me, my right shoulder will never find this pose. There's just something going on with it. But the left shoulder on the other side says this is a breeze. No pun intended from our story, actually. So whatever works for you. And then close your eyes. So I don't think this is the easiest arm pose for everybody to be in. And it probably does make the mind want to flap around. I want you to go back into that center space. Mm -hmm. 
maybe you find a mantra that helps. The body is not me. I am not the body. I am not my arms in this pose. I am, I am none of that. I am simply. Good job. One more breath here. Exhale, release the arms, drop your strap if you're using one. You might wanna just shake out the arms for a second. If you have yoga blocks, go ahead and put one on either side of you at its tallest height. If you do not and you have something else that you want to um, build up, I grabbed a bunch of uh, couch cushions and stuff to make sure that everybody felt included without yoga props, you could do that. Guess what? Yeah, so don't even need them. So if you have nothing around you, it's okay. Inhale, take both arms up. I'm gonna put these back just in case you did have them. Interlace the fingers, drop the hands behind the head. Again, sit up nice and tall, draw the stomach in so there's not a big arch in the low back. And then I'm simply gonna tip over until my right elbow finds that block or whatever prop is there. If you feel like you need to look first, that's okay. What I ultimately want you to do is open up that top shoulder. We don't want that shoulder rounded out. You shouldn't see your elbow in front of you. If you do not have a prop, we're just in a side bend, but we're actively drawing back the left elbow and the left shoulder. Now, deep breath here. Ah, good. Come on back to center. Release the arms, shake them out. We're going to inhale the right arm up. Bend at the elbow, let the hand gently fall behind you. Left fingertips to the earth. Close your eyes, sit up nice and tall, stretch upwards through that right elbow. Soften the left shoulder. Every time thoughts pop into the head, give them a little wave of acknowledgement, let them go. Inhale. Exhale, release that right arm. So again, if you are using a strap, go ahead and grab it. If you're not using anything, it's all good. And again, let's see what this pose looks like from the back. So take the right arm up when you're ready. Bend at the elbow, let the hand come behind you. Left hand reaches up, either finds the fingers or grabs onto your shirt. One elbow reaching up, one elbow pulling down. Breathe. Calm the mind. I am, there's a period there. That wasn't an ellipses. <laughs> I am, period. Good job. On an exhale, release the arms, <clears throat> shake them out. So again, if you do have a block, tallest height next to you on the left side, if you don't have anything, it's all good. Inhale, take the arms up. Interlace the fingers, release the hands behind the head. Ah, inhale here. Exhale, it's either a side bend to the left or drop that elbow all the way down to your prop. Pull the right shoulder and elbow back. Deepen the breath. And then gently pull your way back up. Release the arms. Inhale the shoulders. Exhale back and down. One more time. Perfect. So set your props aside. <laughs> Quite a plethora of them here. So give yourself some space. And then come all the way down onto your back. You know what, before you come down, let me do, give you one option. If you have a strap or a belt or something, 
and you want to use it, you certainly don't need it. But if you want to, we're going to come all the way back. We're going to keep the knees bent. If you want that strap to hold your legs up for you so you don't have to work, you could either put a loop in your strap or you could just tie a quick bow around your thighs if you want to so that this is totally restorative and there's no work. Not necessary if you have nothing. We're just going to lay back, feet on the earth, knees bent, and close your eyes. So whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong. <sighs> I guess again, that's really no pun intended, no right or wrong, although our monks in the story felt they were both right. But what I think was lacking in that story was, you know, if your mind is flapping in the breeze and it's just taking you all sorts of places, you are not grounded. And so I wanted to come down onto the earth. And let's do a little bit of grounding because I think it's a great tool if, um, you know, your mind starts to run away with you in some of this chaos. So feet are flat on the earth. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Loud exhale. I want you to take your focus to the center of the soles of each foot. And I want you to imagine from that point on each foot, you have roots. Your roots are slowly extending down from your feet. They're going through your mat. And let's just assume that beneath your floor is ground. I want you to visualize those roots starting to permeate the earth. Each root as it moves down kind of splits off and branches off into new roots, right? They're going in all different directions. Let the roots go where they want. Just follow them in your mind, but have one main root from each foot going down, straight down through the earth. And the farther it goes, the cooler the earth becomes, the soil more nurturing, more nutrient rich. The farther the roots go, I want you to feel how much stronger you become. Almost as though if someone were to walk in the room right now, find you here with your eyes closed and try to pick up your feet, they wouldn't be able to do it. That is how rooted you are. Now go ahead and stretch the arms overhead. I want you to imagine that your arms are your branches. And your fingers, you can wiggle them, they can spread wide, they can go in different directions. Those are little branches or twigs spouting off the main branches. Ah, and I want you to imagine that what you're reaching for is the sun. You can feel the warmth, you feel the richness, you feel nurtured, you feel a healing energy. And let's allow that sun to represent a divine source of energy or a universal source of energy or perhaps simply to you just a solar energy. And allow that to start to come down through the fingers, your branches. Feel that energizing vibration move down through the arms, into the shoulders, Bring that energy down through the chest, the abdomen, ah, into the hips, and then let it travel up the thighs, across the knees, down the shins, into both feet, and then let that excess energy move out through the soles of the feet, down through the roots. 
And just for a moment, taking a second to express gratitude. <sighs> Inhale, reach through the arms. Exhale, hug the knees in. Bring the arms down to grab onto the legs. So that's a very easy grounding exercise you can do when you need to. It's kind of cool. I don't have them in this room with me right now or I'd show you, but you could take river rocks or even crystals if you want and place them under the soles of the feet as you kind of go through that visualization. All right, rock this out a little bit from hip to hip. When you're ready, go ahead and roll over to whichever side you prefer in a fetal position. And then slowly make your way back up. And just take a moment to let the head gently roll around. You might want to take the shoulders up and back. Perfect. So where we're headed next, I do want to give you some variations on, um, especially if you have knee issues. So I'm going to show you what this looks like in my head first. But remember, everything I'm offering is simply a suggestion. I'm going to give you variations if your knees are not happy about this. So I need you to find two props, if you have them. We'll make this up if, if you don't. If you have blocks, great. If you do not have blocks and you've got some pillows nearby, that would also work as well. And then thirdly, if you have no props, that's going to also work. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. So first of all, you know, when you sit back on the heels, it's pretty tough on the knees. So what I want to do is I'm going to keep the left leg tucked underneath me, but the block or a pillow, I'm going to put right underneath my right sit bone because that's going to take a lot of weight off of that front knee. And then I'm going to stretch out this right leg. What you'll notice here is that the weight of the knee and the leg is gonna cause the knee to hyperextend. So I need a second prop. And I'm putting it right underneath my thigh, just before the knee starts. So this is what the pose might look like for you. If you do not have blocks, and your knee is okay with this, I grabbed a cushion off the couch, and then I grabbed a throw pillow, and I'm just gonna put that right underneath my leg. If the right side of the body is working with the props, but the left knee is saying, yeah, no, this is not working for me, bring this leg out. I'm gonna keep the knee a little bit wider so I have room in front of me because we're eventually going into a fold here. So you can keep the leg here. If you don't have props, you could draw that left leg back. This is gonna be a little tougher because we aren't supported on the right side, but you can. Or left leg in front of you, or bring it in. So you have a lot of different options here, right? Okay, grab your strap if you're using one. Again, we don't have to have it. Find the variation that you wanna be in that works for you. If you have a strap, lasso that right foot. If you do not have a strap, skip that part, it's all good. We're gonna inhale, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, begin to hinge forward, right? So if you don't have a strap, hands to the earth. Close your eyes, let your hamstring guide you. We're not going into pain. Just wanna find a comfortable stretch. Close your eyes if you haven't already. I do also want you to remember that if you do have that left leg behind you and you find that it starts to not be okay on the knee, you can change this position up as many times as you need, right? Couple more breaths here. And then slowly walk the hands back in. 
And again, this part's gonna look different for all of us depending on how we have set up our foundation. If you are sitting like I am on any props, just bring that right foot in, bending the knee. If you're not using props, same thing. You're either gonna look like this. If you have the left leg out here though, let's make a change. Let's draw that foot in, okay? So either way, we're going to have that left hand in front, right hand behind you. Sit up nice and tall on the breath. Exhale into the twist to the right. Good. Wait for your exhale to release the twist. And then we're going to take the open twist. So let the hands switch places. Inhale, find your length. Exhale, twist to the left. When you're ready, come back to center. And let's switch this to the other side. So if you had props. Go ahead and set that up. This knee might be different, so you might need to change it up a little bit, right? <sighs> so hopefully this feels all right. This is a supported hamstring stretch, so there's not as much pressure on the back of that leg. If you're using the strap, go ahead, put it around the ball of the left foot. If you're not using it, we're not worried. Give you a second to make sure you're all set up. When you're ready, Inhale your length, exhale, find your fold. Close your eyes. Remember any time that you're in a yoga pose and the mind starts to get carried away with, I don't like this, this isn't fun, this, uh, this stretch is you know, too intense, that's the mind flapping in the wind. And, you know, if you legitimately are in pain, you definitely need to move before we even got to that point. But if it's just the mind saying, I can't sit here any longer, try to focus on that inner heart center, right? Good job. Slowly walk the hands back in. However you're seated, we're gonna bend that left leg, bring the foot in. If you had the right leg bent and open, draw that foot in front of you. Right hand in front, left hand behind. Inhale, length. Exhale, twist to the left. And then wait for your exhale, not mine, <laughs> to release back to center. Switch the arms for the open twist. Inhale, sit up. Exhale, twist to the right. Then release, come on back. We're gonna come on down off of our perch if we're still on props. And we're gonna set up for a supported child's pose. So again, get creative. You can use your props in any way you want to. So I'm gonna grab, oh, I'll just stick with the couch cushion. It's pretty darn comfy. <laughs> and it's relatively firm like my bolster. So you can put a prop underneath that if you want to. So there's room for your arms to go underneath. If you are on a hard floor, um, you might take your blanket if you're using one. Bring that down in front of you for your knees to rest on. If your knees would like you to be compassionate this morning, then you could take the rest of the blanket, sit up, draw it behind the knees because that will protect you from going too deep into them. 
and then come on down. So this pose can look like whatever you want it to. You don't even have to use any props. You could just ah, float on down into child's pose and close your eyes. As you lie here, I want you to take your focus back to the heart center, the very center, where your true self is just waiting for you. And I want you to feel how in child's pose, that part of you feels very protected. I want you to consider this to be a pose of taking time to honor yourself. And if that needs to be a mantra that you state in your head, I honor myself, I honor myself, so be it. But just kind of, you know, coming down and making this a, a pose about self-love, that's the heart chakra energy anyway. You will often find that just lying in restorative poses, the mind does take off on you. Just bring it back. You might shift your focus to your breath. So it is the breath you feel moving rather than the thoughts. And as always, if you find when you settle into this pose, it becomes uncomfortable, then just change, right? If you have your head turned to one side, will you go ahead and turn it to the other? Focusing on the breath. Perhaps expressing gratitude for what child's pose has to offer you. If you're not sure what the pose has to offer you, ask. Okay, perfect. Let's bring the head back to center if it's not already. As I come up, I want to grab my props, so if you're using them, if you're not, don't worry about it. I'm just going to lift them up a little, take them over to my left side so I can just uh, resettle, melt down into a twisted child's pose. You'll feel the ribs right over your left thigh. Close your eyes if you're not using props. The pose would look more like this. Honoring the self. I am, period. Take a deep breath in. Hold it. Big exhale. And then we're just simply going to pick up the props again. 
move or drag them all the way over to the right side, coming down into twisted child's pose over the right thigh. Focusing on the breath. Keep drawing the mind away from random thoughts. Deep inhale, hold the breath and let it go. And then you can either come back to center first or just come straight up from Twisted Child's Pose. We're going to set the props aside. Perfect. <clears throat> so again, if you have a strap um, or something that looks like one, draw it over close to you. If you don't, don't worry about it. We're going to come on down onto our backs. So we're going to hug the knees into the heart for Apanasan. If you have a strap, you might just take it right over the shins and just use that to pull down. If you don't have a strap, your hands will work perfectly. And then go ahead and stretch that right leg up to the ceiling. You can use your strap or you can use your hands interlaced behind your thigh. Close your eyes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then if you want to go ahead and straighten out that left leg. And then draw both legs back into the heart slowly, thoughtfully. here we'll set that right foot down stretch the right leg up either using your strap or your hands and then again you might choose to straighten out the right leg if that's too much of a stretch keep the leg bent Deep breath in, exhale, ah, hug both knees back to the heart, rock it out. And then we're setting the left foot down on the mat, outer right ankle on the left thigh for our supine pigeon. And so again, using your hands is totally fine. Otherwise, if you want to use your strap, um, when the left foot leaves the ground and the leg pulls in towards you, you could put the strap over the shin and then reach through the hole you've made with your legs and gently pull. Otherwise, just use the hands. Make sure that the right foot stays flexed and you're actively pushing that right knee away from you. Breathe into where you feel the stretch.
and then gently let it go. Ah, switch to the other side. When you're ready, pull the right leg in. Flex the left foot, push the left knee away from you. Breathing in peace. You know, and still feeling really grounded down here, any pose on the floor should allow you that opportunity to explore being rooted. You can feel the spine gently pressing into your mat. You feel the earth rising up to support you. Ah, good. Slowly let that leg down. So think about when we rolled to a side in a field position. Do you have room to roll to the other side this time just so we can change it up? If not, it's okay. But find your fetal position. <clears throat> it's so funny. I was thinking prior to us all coming into this meeting room that the neighbor's dogs were going to start barking, which is a common thing. But I was thinking about how they're like that flag flapping in the wind. It is not something that I have control over. We don't have control over putting up a flag and whether it stays still or it moves. And so allowing yourself to release that control can only bring peace. Ah, we're gonna go ahead and come back up. I don't know about you, I feel like moving just a little bit. So come on over into hands and knees table. Let's go ahead and inhale, find cow. Exhale, round it out into cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. And then come back to a neutral spine. Tuck the toes. One good downward facing dog. Ah, gently push the hips back and up. Heart softens. Ah, take a few deep breaths here. If you need to walk out this pose, you totally should. Inhale, loud exhale. And then bring the knees back down. So we're gonna create a little vinyasa here. We're going to send the left leg back behind you. So as you push into the heel, that will be our exhale. Don't worry about the breath so much right now. Our inhale will be to lift that leg parallel to the ground. Our next exhale will be to bring that left knee to the heart, rounding out the spine, dropping the head. And then inhale, as you come back to a neutral spine, keep that left leg bent, but just raise it behind you so the thigh is parallel to the ground, the foot seems to be holding up the ceiling. And then you'll probably find right here, we're gonna need a little bit of breath retention as we straighten that leg back out, put the foot down and exhale. So let's just start from right here, pushing back into that heel, take a deep breath in, exhale, push into the heel. Inhale, lift that leg parallel to the ground. Exhale, knee to the heart, round the spine. Inhale, keep the leg bent, send it out behind you. Hold the breath, straighten out the leg. Set the foot down and exhale, push into the heel. Inhale, leg is parallel to the earth. Exhale, knee to the heart. Inhale, lift that bent leg behind you. Hold the breath, straighten out that leg slowly. Exhale as you set the foot down and push into the heel. One last cycle here. Inhale, lift the leg. Exhale, knee to the heart. 
Inhale, lift the bent leg behind you. This time, exhale back to table. Perfect. Inhale, cow. Hold that for a second. Ah, round it into cat. Come back to table. Stretch that right leg out behind you. Tuck the toes, push into the heel. That'll be our exhale, right? We'll inhale, we'll lift that leg parallel to the earth. We will exhale, bringing the knee to the heart, rounding the spine. Inhale, that leg stays bent. Foot holds up the ceiling. Hold the breath, slowly straighten out the leg, let the foot come down to the earth, and then that's the exhale. So push into that heel, stay right here. Deep breath in. Exhale, push. Inhale, leg is parallel to the ground. Exhale, knee to the heart. Inhale, send the bent leg behind you. Hold the breath, slowly straighten out the leg. Exhale as the toes come down and you push back into the heel. Inhale, leg is parallel to the ground. Exhale, knee to the heart. Inhale, lift the foot up behind you. Exhale as you straighten that leg, set the foot back down. This is the last one, push. Inhale, lift that leg. Exhale to the heart. Inhale, lift the bent knee behind you. Exhale to table. Ah, nice. So take a second. You might want to flow through cat-cow for a moment. You might feel like pushing into child's pose. I kind of feel like a dog right here. So you might find downward facing dog, whatever you need to do. Ah, and then when you're ready, come on back down to your mat. Ah, you know, a little bit of work, a little bit of relaxation. So let's set up another restorative pose, shall we? Let's find that blanket. Mine is kind of a folded fiasco at the moment, but that's okay. I'm just gonna take it straight out behind me. It's gonna fall kind of mid back. If you have other props, let's take the blocks and put the bolster on top. If we do not have blocks and the bolster, uh, Couch cushion will work. You can add another pillow if you want to for fun and excitement. Actually, I might reverse that so this one's a little bit higher and wider. And so as I lay back, that blanket's going to be about mid-back. I want my calves up on whatever creation I have at the other end of my mat. Wiggle around, make sure this is comfy. <sighs> yeah, it's comfy. And then close your eyes. So, while you're hanging out here, you know I love my Buddha stories. <sighs> so one day, Buddha was out walking through the forest, just totally soaking in how beautiful nature can be. And as he came upon a crossroads, there was a, a man who was very upset, praying fervently. And when he saw Buddha, he recognized him, and he dropped to the earth, and he saw it said, and believe me, I'm paraphrasing, so you know, don't hold me to each specific word. But he said, Lord Buddha, you know, why is life just all bitter and, and pain? I used to be a wealthy man, but I lost everything to people that I loved and trusted. They were deceitful. They took it all from me, and I have nowhere to turn. How many more lifetimes of suffering must I go through before I recognize blissful liberation. So right behind the man was a mango tree, just full of beautiful ripe mangoes. And Buddha said, do you see the mango tree behind you? For each mango that is on that tree, that's how many lifetimes you must come back. 
um, before you reach that blissful liberation. And the man turned and saw about 20 mangoes on that tree. And he was so upset. And he said, but, but Buddha, I have lived a righteous life. Why do I have to come back that many times to suffer? And Buddha simply said, that is the way it must be. And he walked on. That's not the end of the story, but hang on. I want you to go ahead and hug the right knee in. And then let's stretch that leg back up to the ceiling. Interlace your fingers behind that thigh so we can hold the leg here comfortably or grab your strap. Because I'm going to leave you here for the second part of the story. Well, maybe that's too much suffering. <laughs> As I was thinking about it, I thought, well, that kind of goes with the story, doesn't it? All right, I won't leave you here. Take a deep breath. Ah, bring that knee back in and stretch that leg back out. <sighs> Fabulous. That's where I'll tell you the second part of the story. It seems more fair, compassionate, and kind. <laughs> so anyway, Buddha continues walking. And he comes upon this other man in the road who is also extremely upset and also fervently praying. And when he set, sees Buddha, he says, Lord Buddha, why is life so bitter and painful? Everyone I've loved has been taken by death. I, I have nothing and I am lonely. And how many more times do I have to be reborn before I can experience blissful liberation? And Buddha said, do you see all the wildflowers growing on the road behind you? And the man turned and Buddha said, for as many wildflowers as you see. That's how many times you need to come back um, before you will be liberated. And the man was so upset. There were like a hundred flowers behind him. But, but Buddha, I have lived the good life. I have followed your word. Why do I have to come back that many times to suffer before I'm liberated? And Buddha said, that's the way it must be. And he walked on. Hang on to that part of the story as you pull that left knee into your heart. And then send the left leg up to the ceiling. Interlace the fingers behind the thigh. And then, of course, being the compassionate soul that I am, I won't leave you here either. Take a deep breath in. Gently rebend that leg. And stretch it back out. So Buddha continues walking. And he gets to a third man. And this man is also very upset. And he spots Buddha and he recognizes him immediately. And he says, Buddha, my, my life is just, it's suffering. It's painful. I work all day in the hot sun. I'm always hungry. I'm always thirsty. I sleep in the grass outside at night. How many more times do I have to be reborn and suffer before I find that blissful liberation? And Buddha said, do you see the tamarind tree behind you? And the man turned. And this big tamarind tree had branches reaching up for the sky, just like we pretended to do earlier at the beginning of this practice. And each branch was branching off into other branches. And each little branch seemed to have a dozen leaves on it. And it just kept extending and extending up to the sky. And Buddha said, for as many leaves as you see on that tamarind tree, that's how many times you need to come back to, to this lifetime before you find blissful liberation. And the man looked at those hundreds of leaves and tears filled his eyes, tears of gratitude. And he simply said, how merciful. 
So I felt like those stories went together because they're both about where the mind is at. And as you hug your knees back into your heart here for a moment, one of the things that I'm really grateful for in what we're experiencing that my mind could not have comprehended before was just how many cool things you can actually do online that you wouldn't think of, right? This past week, I've been to India. I sat in a lecture with Sadhguru and it was fascinating and it was humorous and it was awesome. And I've been to Canada this week to sit in a lecture with Jack Cornfield and later today with Pema Chodron and let's see, last night I was in Boulder, Colorado and in a kirtan and just the amount of connections that we can make right now that I don't know that we would have stopped to do so before. It's really kind of fascinating. I want you to go ahead and roll to a side in a fetal position. <clears throat> Close your eyes. And then slowly push your way back up. I know we've got a lot of props around us. It doesn't really matter. You can set them off to a side. You're only a few minutes away from Shavasana, so I don't want you to feel like you're separated from your props completely. And then let's go ahead and take the legs into cobbler, Baddha Konasana. This is another one of those poses. You either love it or it might be a little hard on the hips, and if that's the case, you know, grab your props. Oh, I grabbed a funny prop because I really did want to, you know, get home to you that you don't need yoga props. Can of paint, I'm starting a new project tomorrow. It is a perfect block for under the knee, right? So get creative, look around, see what you have that can be useful to you. Just got to think outside the box, I suppose, right? Sit up nice and tall. <sighs> Let's take the thumbs to the inner soles of the feet and pull the feet gently open. If they don't want to go there, don't make them. And then you can either stay right here or you might choose to hinge forward into a fold. When you're ready, push your way back up. Ah, stretch the legs out in front of you, Dandasana staff pose, which just simply means that the hands are palms down right by your hips, feet are flexed, close your eyes. As you gently push the backs of the legs into the earth, come back to that sense of being grounded, of the body absorbing nutrients and nurturing up from the earth. And as you sit up tall in this pose, you feel the crown of the head reaching up towards that sun that we've imagined. That fabulous source of, of warmth, a healing vibration. Ah, soak that in for a moment. If there's any part of your physical body that is, is or has been facing dis-ease, send the healing there. And if it's more of a mental, um, quandary you've been experiencing, let that all settle into the mind, seeping in through the third eye perhaps, or settling into the crown. Breathing in, I am, and just exhaling. Breathing in, I am, and then exhaling. We don't want a word to follow, am. I am is simply a mantra of existence. I am. Deep inhale. Hold the breath. Big exhale. Shake the legs out a little bit if the legs found that to be stressful or intense. And then, ah, this is what you've been waiting for, right? Shavasana. So grab everything and anything around you. Set up your, your mat as comfortably as you can envision it. All right? If you're new to yoga, 
Shavasana's corpse pose. We just lay back. Ah, you let the ankles fall open. Arms are spaced a little distance away from your body. Palms are open. That's a gesture of receiving. And since we've already created this amazing visualization of a nurturing sun, I want you to imagine that you can feel and see those sun rays coming down and just settling into the palms of your hands. As you close your eyes and you settle into your space, I wanted to share a poem with you by Gingaji. Recognize the power of mind, respect the power of mind, and also recognize the power behind the power, the ocean holding the wave. Recognize yourself as the ocean with your stories, your feelings as waves. Waves can be beautiful or terrifying, but always they return to the ocean. Every wave always is made up of the ocean. No wave can ever be separate from the ocean. Waves of thoughts, waves of emotions, waves of sensations, Waves of events are all made up of consciousness and all return to consciousness while never being separate from consciousness. And if this becomes another story, let this go and see what is true. Settle into Shavasana. Wait for my voice to come back and get you.
Keeping your eyes closed, allow my words to be yours. I am grateful. I feel grounded and rooted to an earth that wants to provide me with nurturing. I accept that. I surrender to the unknown wind like tree branches. And hearing this mantra in your mind, I am, I am, I am, a mantra of just pure existence without having to do, without having to move. It's just being. Feel this mantra in your soul. I am, I am, I am. And as you focus on my voice, I am, I am, I am. You allow your focus to come back into your physical body. I am. Your breath begins to deepen. Perhaps you invite movement into the hands and the feet. And if you want to, stay exactly as you are. If you would prefer, you could roll into a fetal position. Now when you're ready, very peacefully push your way back up to any seated pose, keeping the eyes gently shut. Deep breath in through the nose. Super loud exhale. Inhale, both arms up. Bring the palms together and exhale them back home to your heart in prayer pose. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste.